let's call it like the power rankings of the Gen AI leaders. And it feels very much like this week that OpenAI has taken the lead between that new funding round um, that it's looking to doubling its weekly active users, Project Strawberry. Would you agree with that assessment? And also, why does it matter who's in the lead and that it changes all the time? Well, I mean, they are definitely the the main innovator when it came to ChatGPT. They they made the world aware of generative AI and its capabilities. So um, that really spurred just a ton of demand from the from the enterprise. And really, that's where we're focused: is how can we take that technology and actually make it work for the enterprise, not just consumer. Um, things like being able to customize models and capabilities um, with customers own data. That's actually super important. It's going to drive a ton of growth. So uh, why is it important that they're the leader? Well, I mean, they're continuing to innovate along with us and other other players in the space now. But, you know, really, they're, they're credited with opening the floodgates here. As they become more successful, as they sign on more corporate clients in the space, do they increasingly compete with one of their major backers, Microsoft? Um, sure. I think there's a co-optition going on right now. Everyone's jockeying for position in different um, emergent segments of the market. I mean, um, just like the internet or the, the mobile phone, you know, when when the first technology shows promise and shows that it can work, then there starts to become this um, the, this, this, this formation of different kinds of markets and with different dynamics. And so uh, all of us are in, who are in this space are actually going after those different things. There's going to be some overlap for a while until uh, until things sort out. Right. Maybe talk also about the competition and sort of the kind of customers that a Snowflake has versus a Databricks. I've talked to a few people in recent weeks who, you know, are switching from Snowflake to Databricks. Um, what is Databricks good at that maybe Snowflake isn't? And where does that kind of put you in that competition? Yeah, Databricks has a you know eleven year history of actually combining data with machine learning. So AI is machine learning. Um, this is not a new thing for us. Many of our customers actually get lots of value from the platform, um, uh, being able to apply uh, standard machine learning techniques to their data, customizing those things, building forecasting. Generative AI is the next thing on top of that. We actually call this. Uh, uh, data intelligence where customers can use Gen AI with their data and actually build new experiences or, or uncover new insights in their data. So uh, Databricks has a long history of this. It's a con continuation of that. Uh, Snowflake has an amazing product for data warehousing. Of course, we, we overlap on that. Uh, but the combination of uh, AI and machine learning with data is extremely powerful. And then bringing together tools like Unity Catalog and governance on top of this, where you know, it becomes just much easier to manage the, the growing complexity of, of building and deploying these kinds of solutions. Um, as I mentioned at the top, there were just so many headlines in generative AI this week. Mm -hmm. And you know, we were talking about Salesforce earnings, and Mark Benioff had this line on his call, and, and to our Jim Cramer, where he said, you know, companies are trying to do it yourself, AI, and they shouldn't be doing this. Mm -hmm. They should be relying on companies like a CRM, which now has agent force. Do you agree with that assessment? Do you think that companies should be doing it internally? Tasks like that, and I'm talking more about sales and marketing mm -hmm. and customer service. Do they need to do it in-house or should they be outsourcing that? I generally, I agree with that sentiment that they should be outsourcing it. This is, uh, there, there are experts who are building tools and, and observing the right patterns and building those into really reliable solutions. And you know, we're, we're doing a similar thing. Now, I think it really depends on the scale of the customer. Um, a company like Google is, of course, going to, to own their own stack because it's something that's very important to their business. Uh, but general businesses, general enterprises really don't need to be investing the kinds of money it takes to build uh, state-of-the-art systems. That's that's for us, like, uh, like Databricks, to be doing. Don't these open models make it easier for them to do so? You don't need the same kind of engineering talent. And if you're paying so much for sort of a third party and you have open source models, why, why not bring it in-house? The model is one component of an entire system. So the model can generate in, in human language. It can um, it can do some interpolation of, of inputs, but really it's one component. And actually just deploying those models is itself a huge engineering task. The, mm. the model is just a file. There's a lot of work that goes into deploying it, uh, making sure things are secure, fast, performant, uh, reliable. All of this actually takes a lot of engineering. So I, I, I do actually uh, echo that same sentiment. You know, trust the experts who are building great tools for this and pick the one that, that works for you.